Here we are in game. Let's go over here. Outside. Oh, here it, here it is, all working nicely. Hi guys, X Reaction. Uh, I'm just going to be making a ambient rooms tutorial because there doesn't actually seem to be any really video tutorials online. So um, I'm going to be following Ardevi's written tutorial here and I'm uh, going to be making a few changes to it as it's a tiny bit outdated. The only changes I'll really be making is just uh, making custom ambient room files so that you're not changing the stock file but yeah that's uh that's what we're going to be doing so let's get started so first of all you're going to want to be downloading this there you go you can see i've already downloaded it but um we're just going to want to grab that here yep right so what you can either do here is go to your map name scripts zm folder here and put it in here or you can put it in the shared uh, scripts here so we put it in here ZM and then just drag and drop it here I have dragged and dropped it in the shared one so that it applies to all my maps but you can put it here so it only applies to this specific map I'll be doing that because that's what it says in the written tutorial so let's just put it here this is one I've just downloaded get rid of the one so if we open up our map name.csc which is here um, and copy this line here we are we'll just put it below user map now it's going to be calling it in the client side script. Save that. Right, so now we're going to copy the zmaudio.csc, not the gsc, csc from the share all scripts zm file. So we'll copy that. Go back to our scripts. Paste it here. So now we're going to open it up and we're going to find this function in the file. So we could just copy this. Go back here. Control F paste that we see the function here so grab this copy and we're gonna replace the entire thing from this all the way down to here yep press save now we're gonna scroll down a little bit um, and we're gonna add this to the zone of our map which if we go to our mod tools launcher and go to our map name edit zone it's gonna pop up here and we're just going to go down here, paste that in there, make it all neat. And we'll, we'll be changing this uh, after a little bit. So here on the written tutorial, it's just telling you where you can find uh, the names of the ambient rooms that you want to use. Uh, but uh, we can deviate from this slightly. So if we go to uh, share raw sound and then go to ambience. Here is the default one, it's got nothing in it, but what I'm going to do is, uh, as you can see here, I've made a new one, so what you'll just do is copy paste, and so like this, and then you'll call the new one, whatever you want, so you can see I've called it custom ambient mod, I'm just going to delete this, and if we open it up, this is what I've got in here, so we've got the default line, and then all the stuff that I've, the custom things that I've added, so the first one is going to be the name that you're calling in Radiant um, and then we can ignore this second line and this one defines whether it's a default so if you're not in any um, reverb rooms then it will default to this specific line so you can see I've got it on this first one this is the default one um, and then the next line is uh, the, the name of what is going to be in here so it will look for this in this common reverb file this is another one where you can create a custom one if you want or you could just use the default ones here um, I'd advise just using the default ones here but I would definitely also advise to create a custom ambient mod uh, CSV so you're not editing the default files so now with the new file you've just created you're going to want to go back to your zone grab the name of it from the share raw sound ambience copy that and paste it in here. Save. Now if you compile and uh, link now, it still won't work because obviously we don't have it in Radiant, but uh, also because this custom file that it's looking for isn't defined in the ambient room here. So we're also going to want to change it right at the top here. So just paste it in there and save that. 
Okay, so the next step would be getting the reverb rooms and the ambient rooms in the map so that when you walk into a room like this, it plays so when you shoot, it sounds like you're in an enclosed space. You can see I've just made a little room here, it's nothing special, but just to demonstrate the uh, ambient rooms. So we'll start by going to our entity browser, going to trigger and dragging on a trigger multiple. Now, if you don't want to do this every time when you're creating triggers, you can right click trigger and toggle favorite. So every time you right click, you're gonna have a trigger down here. And if we just delete this trigger and multiple, here we are. Now let's drag it out the size of the room. And you'll also want to give it a sound trigger texture so you know what you're looking at, you know what kind of trigger it is. And now we can press N to open the KVP window uh, and we're going to give it some custom KVPs. So the target name is going to be ambient underscore room. Next one is going to be script underscore ambient room. And this is the ambient room that is defined here. So I'll, I'll show you how to make a custom one after this, but for now, we will leave it blank. Add. And the last one is script ambient priority. And what this is gonna do is, um, if multiple ambient rooms are over each other, the higher the number is here on the specific ambient room, defines whether it will be prioritized over the other trigger. So say you have one here and then we copy and paste this and have it like this so it's slightly inside it. Uh, if the one slightly outside has a two and you go into where they intersect, the one outside will be prioritized over the one inside if it has two here. But most of the time we'll just leave that as, as one because you won't usually have uh, overlapping ambient rooms. We're also going to want to toggle client side trigger as it's being handled on the client side and not the server side. Okay, now let's go on to the script ambient room here. So how do we decide what one we're going to use? Um, if I create a new line here, so this is just a bunch of stuff I've been messing around with, but let's say we copy the default line. We're going to change this to no, as we don't want this to be defaulted to when we're not in any trigger multiples. We're going to change this global urban outdoor if we go to the common reverb, we can find what kind of reverb we want it to be. So let's go with, we'll go with factory small room as the room we're using. The room I've made is pretty small. I'm going to go to our custom one and we're going to paste it right here where it says global urban outdoor. We're also going to want to change this outdoor to indoor in one word. So it says, yep, yeah, this is indoors. And then we're going to want to change the name here to whatever we want to use uh, when we're typing it in Radiant on that KVP. So we'll just call it YouTube Small Room. Save that. I'm going to copy this name. Go back to our Radiant. And inside the script ambient room, we're just going to paste that name. So now it knows to look inside that CSV for this name here. And it's going to be using the factory small room settings. Um, all the settings for factory small room are right here. It's uh, pretty confusing, but you could just use these ones and you don't have to mess around with these settings. Uh, if you did want to mess around with these settings, you would have to create a custom reverb as well um, and copy the line and then have a mess around with it. Um, it is pretty confusing though, so I won't be doing that in this video. Before we link and compile, I'm actually going to change this to 0.7. This is the, the amount of dry sound, so non-reverberated sound you're going to hear. This is the amount of reverberated sound you'll hear, so we'll turn the dry sound down slightly and keep the reverb sound at 1 so we can hear it nice and clearly. I'm also going to add indoor after this line here, so after that comma, just so the game knows that it's indoors. Save that. So yeah, we do have to use indoor twice, but if you open this file in something like Excel, you'll be able to see uh, rows and columns. So uh, say for the first column, you'll see that this is uh, the name here. The second column, you see this is the load spec. Third column, default room. Fourth column, the reverb you're using. Fifth column, the dry reverb level and etc. So you'll be able to better understand it if you open it in Excel or a free version of Excel or whatever. So yeah, let's save that, test this out. 
I did forget to mention that you also have to define this CSV file inside your sound zone config. So if we wanted to get to that, that would be in our user maps, uh, your map name, sound zone config, and then we're going to want to open this up. Uh, we'll copy this line here, ambient mod, go here, press enter, paste it in. And uh, let's just double check what the name is, but I believe it's custom ambient mod. Yep. So just in case, I'll copy this, paste it there, paste it there. And now it knows, it can say, yep, let's open this up and uh, use these ambience as well as these ones. So I'll save that. Now I do want to say that um, RDV uh, graciously um, explained a lot of stuff on this website here so I'll link this in the description so you can look and uh, read for yourself how it all works um, it is pretty complicated but after a little bit you should be able to get the hang of it um, and also I want to mention that for some reason the Black Ops 3 weapons don't always trigger uh, the, uh, when you're standing inside the reverb so sometimes when you're inside this ambient room it will be reverberated when you shoot but sometimes it won't but with most custom weapons uh, say with a lot of skies ports uh, the reverb will work absolutely fine in it character quotes everything all the sounds should should be uh, should work when you stand inside this but um, the only way we're going to find out is if we test it so let's do that this link like a file down below and I'll be back when it's done so here we are in game let's go over here outside oh here it here it is all working nicely so as you can see, sometimes it doesn't work when you shoot the default weapons from BO3, so the MR6. Um, but if I were to install uh, Sky's weapon ports or you know any custom weapons, then they should work fine 100% of the time, um, unlike the BO3 weapons. But other sounds, as I said, zombie sounds, uh, player quotes, stuff like that, should all work fine when you install them. But yeah, as for now, that's working. So yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or if I didn't explain it properly, you need me to better explain it. Uh, leave it in the comments or add me on Discord. I'll leave my Discord in the description as well. But yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next video, the next tutorial. And peace out.